Wizard Foo here. It's another video in the Load Ragger 5 vs. 5 development series. Now working on steering. Steering to make AI behave more lifelike and realistic and also improves the movement for the player and makes it a lot smoother. So before with Songbringer, uh, I was really going for an 8-bit feeling like you press the right arrow key and you move directly to the right. You move, press the left arrow key, you move directly to the left. You press up and to the right, you move to the northwest instantly in that direction. Um, however, for this being a 3D game, uh, Load Ragger, that it's going to need more of a feeling like uh, this lifelike feeling. In fact, the AI um, in Songbringer could only move in eight different compass directions. That's north, south, east, west, northwest, northeast, south, west, southeast. Um, but this is a much smoother system where I can use, there's 360 degree movement. So uh, I think this will give a, a nice feeling to Load Ragger. Um, and also will make the AI a lot more believable using this steering. So what's going on here is um, if I start moving directly to the right and then I start moving down, let's do that. See, it takes a second for it to start getting at that, that downward angle. It steers itself towards that. Um, and then you see sometimes it's lighting up the uh, player's um, sprite as green. What that's doing is it's detecting a turn. So I, even though there's this AI steering, I want, or the, the steering for all entities actually, um, I want it to make uh, turning around quick. That was something really fun about Songbringer is you could quickly turn around and throw your top hat backwards and do all this fun stuff. So I'm trying to blend some of the best elements of the 8-bit feeling with some of the best elements of the newer, uh, you know, vector-based movement type feelings. So, um, but basically, so when that when the player icon uh, lights up green, that means that it's enacting a turn. And what that does is it quickly um, changes the heading instead of slowly changing the heading like uh, the, the uh, steering does. So that's um, that's basically it for showing like what it looks like. Let's go with what it looks like, see what it looks like in the code. Um, so to implement all the steering, the first thing I had to do was add to the move component. So the move components now have a steering duration. That's just the number of seconds it takes for the steering to steer it towards its desired uh, velocity. There's a turning angle which is an, an angle whereby if a turn happens within that angle, or actually above that angle, uh, then it will enact its turning factor. And the turning factor basically uh, blends the current heading with the desired heading by that certain factor instantly. Um, and then there's a cooldown before it can turn again. So let's look at what that does in the move system, how it incorporates all those different variables. Basically, um, before there was the system had just a heading. Now the system has a desired heading as well as a heading. So it uses its desired heading to set where it's trying to go with the input. Like if you press down, you're trying to go straight down in the Y direction. Um, and uh, so that, that this sets up the desired heading and normalizes it. And then it actually sets the, the actual heading with, um, with steering. So, and this is the allowing the objects to turn around quickly. Um, as long as there's no the cooldown timer, it takes the old angle, which is the heading, um, and the new angle from the desired heading, and then computes the delta between them. And if that is bigger than the turning angle, then it can turn on the turning cooldown timer and set its heading. And actually, what it does is it blends its heading with its desired heading by the turning factor. So that's, that's how turning works. And then this is how the steering works. Um, and this is different than uh, your typical steering you're gonna find in basic tutorials online. Um, I kind of implemented this in my own way. Usually you would take your desired heading and subtract your current velocity. Well, no, you take your desired velocity and subtract your current velocity to get your steering velocity. And you would add that to your current velocity uh, and, and cap it by your maximum velocity um, but once again, I'm trying to I'm trying to create some mathematics that creates a feeling that's different than most games. So basically, what I'm doing here is uh, blending 
the um, the heading with the desired heading by a certain alpha value, which depends on the steering duration. So that's how uh, steering and uh, all that works. And um, yeah, I guess that's all there is to explain about that. So there it is, steering implemented. Really excited about this. It immediately made the game's um, movement feel more realistic and lifelike and natural and organic and all that, all those words. Um, there's a few issues, like uh, when it goes to slide against um, collision uh, certain objects, it somehow gets stuck on the edge. Even though, even though I'm pressing directly to the right right now, it's still sliding along that edge. So there's got to be something just slightly off there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we'll figure that out. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.